So if you had the opportunity to go into space and progress humanity, would you willingly choose this option even if it meant leaving your spouse behind? And if you were the spouse that is left behind, would you accept this as your place in life or would you seek more? These are some of the questions that are explored in the novel Faux by Ian Reid. If you don't know, Ian Reid is one of my favorite authors and so I'm here to do a review or re-review rather of Faux. Now I'm going to keep the first part of this video entirely spoiler free, but if you aren't aware there is a movie that has recently come out and I'm just going to be talking about the book, but afterwards if you've seen the movie or have read the book, I will have spoilers at the end of this video talking about the ending because it does require some explanation and discussion, but I'm to be really clear when I switch over to spoilers with timestamps and everything. So don't worry, you will know well ahead of time before you need to click off this video. First, let's start with a spoiler free premise. This book is set in an isolated rural area where we follow two individuals that are married together. They are Han and Junior and have lived in this area for quite a while and mostly keep to themselves. They have their farm and they take care of their own work. Then one night, a man from the government comes and tells them that they, or rather simply the man, only Junior, has been selected to have the opportunity to go into space and work on the first progression of this rig that is going up, and so he needs to prepare for this journey. However, the government also wants to take care of his wife, knowing that she will be left alone, and so they prepare a situation where she will have companionship during that period. This is a story that is told in a first person perspective from Junior and it's a very intentional choice because we only get to see the world as he understands it from his limited perspective. And so while this is a science fiction novel, it's also first and foremost a piece of psychological suspense. It's also a literary novel. It is so many things, it's so hard to classify, which is often why I struggle to put it into a box when I discuss it on my channel. So this is a book that I think will appeal to a lot of the different readers that watch my channel. And it's one that you really have to try out for yourself. Basically, you follow this man as he is trying to piece together what is going on. So he only has the information that is told to him. And again, I really wanna keep this video spoiler free. So I won't say too much more as to what is happening, but you follow him as he is going about his day. After the announcement, he finds that his wife is acting rather strangely towards him. And he's trying to figure out what she's thinking. And again, that's why it's very purposeful why this book is told the way it is, because we don't know what's in her mind. And we as a reader are left guessing what is going on there and just have to figure it out from there. And so we know that there is this preparation coming. The details of what he's gonna do away from home are very vague and a lot of questions are left up to the reader, wondering why this man has been selected, what special talents he has that makes him suitable for this job. So much of the story is very small in focus, so we only get to see what is happening at this farm. Throughout the story, the man from the government comes and leaves again and whenever he comes, he is there to ask more questions, he inspects them, he has to do studies, and this vague preparation. And we as a reader are trying to guess what is going on along with Junior who really doesn't understand what's happening. He doesn't really accept that this is just going to happen and he wants to fight against it. However, his wife is kind of just going along with the process in a way that he doesn't understand. And he is just trying to be a good partner to her. He's trying to respect his responsibilities, both at home and also to the larger world and humanity. And essentially this becomes a story of possibilities, of opportunities and the questions and decisions that follow afterwards. And that is basically where I can leave it there in terms of a premise. So let me talk a little bit more about what this book is doing without saying too much. If you aren't aware, this author is Canadian and while this book does not explicitly take place in Canada, it does play into the literary legacy of Canadian lit, which is always very much focused around the theme of isolation. And so that plays very heavily into the story. We follow the characters and they're in, again, this microscope, this little microcosm, and they are not otherwise very affected by the outside world. They're not living in a large city. And that is a lot of the conversation about this is with the man leaving is that his wife is really left without that companionship. And she's left alone on a farm in a very vulnerable place. And so a lot of the questions come about how the government is going to take care of her in this situation and what that truly entails. So I love that he takes a very classic theme of Canadian lit and then obviously modernizes it to the nines by pushing it into a futuristic situation. While this book of course has those future elements, I again want to mention that if you're looking for a book that is going to explain the science and technology about what is happening in the larger world, you're not going to get that here. 
So while this book definitely plays with science fiction elements and it does not hide that from the reader, if you're expecting a straight-up contemporary, you should know that this book absolutely has speculative elements to it. However, if you're someone who loves to have the science and technology explained to you, if you love hard science fiction, you're not going to get that here, so I don't want to set you with incorrect expectations. But I do think that this book will appeal to those of you that like the idea of exploring science fiction, so not necessarily the hard ideas of how is this future technology going to work, but what would a future like this look like, and starting to kind of piece that together on a very personal, character-driven level. As well, again, this book works very well for those of you that normally read psychological suspense, because this book is incredibly suspenseful. It is slower paced, I will admit that not a lot happens, which again, perhaps is a token of Canadian lit, where the characters are very much going about their day. They're describing the glass of water they're drinking, their chores, what they're doing around the farm. They're describing going to the washroom, flossing their teeth. And so if you're looking for a fast paced thriller that's gonna be a page turner, this is not what the book is trying to be. And I think it accomplishes what it's trying to do, which is create a sense of atmosphere and dread exceptionally well. I was hooked into it from the first minute I started reading it the first time around, and I've now reread it in order to prepare for this review. And I gotta say that even though I knew where the book was going, I was still gripped in, I was hooked, I wanted to know what was gonna happen next, and just watch those pieces fall out once again, because there is so much more to this story, and we get to just see that play out slowly as it is revealed to the reader, and it's so satisfying because it is so well plotted. On top of that, Ian Reid, as I've always said, is known for his prose. It's a reason that I always describe his books as literary, because while there are definitely genre elements to a story like this, really he plays on a higher level where he is bringing really great concepts, comparisons, and themes into his work. The writing itself is gorgeous, and you will see how well it is presented. As I mentioned, his plots are very tight. This book is not long. There is no fat in it. There is nothing that I would edit out. It is perfect. Perfect. And while it is slow paced, it is intentionally done so. And I would argue that I did not want to skip a page. I did not want to rush ahead. I savored every moment because it is so well done and you really have to pay attention to the details. And that is why this is a book that I highly recommend reading it and then reading it twice. Again, if you've seen the movie, I hope that you finish the movie and go back and read the book because it's the kind of story where once you know the ending of it, which again, I'm not going to explain yet, but once you know what that ending is, you're going to want to go back and see the story all over again because everything will be reframed once those reveals happen. And it's the kind of story that's so satisfying because the author does plant the details there, but in a way that is very subtle and quiet, not over the top. Reading it the first time, I had hints or guesses about what was going to happen, but I would argue that even if you guess what is going on along the way and you see some of the twists coming, they're still satisfying because it's less about having the reader's jaw drop the floor and instead exploring some really interesting ideas about relationships. So jumping off of that, I really want to explore further the relationship between Junior and Hen. They have a very relatable relationship. They have been together a very long time. They're not newlyweds, and so you see a love that has a deep root in appreciation, but not necessarily just two people who can't keep their paws off of each other. And so you see their relationship as they're at this bridge point where they have to make a change and decision or rather the decision to be made for them really. And they simply have to react to that. Can their relationship handle this change? Can they survive those years apart? And what will their relationship be like when they finally get to come back together? This book answers a lot of those questions and also leaves the reader with more questions themselves. As someone who has been in a long-term relationship and still is, I am happy that I think the representation is so accurate for the complications of long-term relationships and the back and forth how it is sometimes better or more strained and seeing the nuances there. I think it is so well done, so smart. And again, it's a book that will leave you thinking about it for a very long time after finishing it. And hopefully, like I said, you'll go back to the beginning and read it all again. So I think that's as far as I can go with this video without getting into spoilers. But before you leave, a few reminders here that with any kind of video that involves spoilery content, I really appreciate if you give it a thumbs up and drop a comment, even if it's just an emoji before leaving, it really helps the algorithm to know that the video is good or you enjoyed it, even though you're clicking off early. And if you wanna help me out even more, you can actually just turn down the volume on your phone after this and keep uh, watching it without actually watching it allowing the video to stream to the end. But at this point, I am gonna move into spoilers, so if you haven't read the book or seen the movie to the end, you'll wanna click off now. Thank you so much, I will talk to you soon. All right, talking spoilers in three, two, one, 
go. All right, and I'm back to talk all the spoilers. So again, I'm gonna only be talking about the book. I have not watched the movie at the time of filming this. So I'd be interested to know for those that have watched it, how it's going to differ from the book in the adaptation. But in the book, it is revealed in the final act that Junior has already left to go on this mission and that the Junior that we know is actually the artificial companion who has replaced him. This is the piece of story that I did somewhat predict as I was reading it the first time, but instead of being disappointed that I guessed it, I felt very smart and really enjoyed getting to see those clues as they played out. So I like that that reveal happened close to the end, but not completely there, and there is more to the story. Because really then you have the reveal when the real Junior comes back, you see the replacement, the devastation of Junior, realizing that they are not the real one. They also have the great red hair where we assume that the government man is possibly going to replace him. I definitely remember feeding into that theory and it definitely made sense and there was a lot of clues kind of leading to that because we didn't trust him and what was going on with Han. But for me, the real glorious part of this ending is the part with Han at the end when she is back with Real Junior. And we finally get to see Real Junior and he's not necessarily the nicest spouse or husband. He's very much full of himself and you could argue that the artificial or replacement Junior, of course, was based off of him. But through that experience, he grew and changed and gained a lot of respect for Han, which we don't see in the original real life Junior, which I think is a really interesting choice. And so because of that, it actually makes sense why we see the progression of Han's character along the way. If she is naturally very standoffish to this artificial companion that's left with her, I would also lock the door to my bedroom at night if that was the person living in my house. But gradually she comes to really like this companion because again, he is like Junior, but then and he is also his own person eventually and grows and matures with that. And they end up having perhaps a more healthy relationship than she does with her actual husband, in which case it spurs her to seek more from her life. So the fake junior is now gone. So then it's implied that when the government man is coming back, Han was asking him if she could also go and be part of the mission. They mentioned that the next part of the mission would never actually come back. And so he assumingly was taking measurements in order to create an artificial version of her. And so right at the end of the story, it's suggested that when she leaves and comes back, that that's not actually her, but the replacement version. And you definitely see the shift in her mood, the disappointment and distance that she has at the end of the story shifts after she comes back and then she becomes the perfect Stepford wife that he's looking for and they are once again satisfied in their marriage. So it's interesting how the story is written that the times that they are most satisfied with their marriages is when one of them is replaced by this artificial construct that is there to make the other person happy. And kind of what that says about marriage and companionship, the back and forth, and are we really putting our partner first and putting their interests ahead of our own, or are we naturally selfish people that want our partners to always shift and accommodate us? And so I love that detail in there. And the way that this is hinted at beyond just her mood change is if you didn't catch it, they established that both the real hen as well as the real junior both despise beetles. So at the end, when she's no longer bothered by the beetle, it suggests that the clones or companions are not entirely perfect and gives a hint that her companion is the one that's there and Hen is actually gone, presumably to be never seen again. So in terms of an ending, I think it's brilliant, it's smart. Again, I think it makes some great conversations about what it means to be married in a relationship, what companionship really truly means to us. And I love the fact that Hen, who is presumed to be someone who is just happy to be at home, living her small isolated life, actually wants more for herself, or at least grows to want more for herself, when she has a partner who gives her the respect to see a larger world around her. And so I think it's got some some really beautiful conversations, not just about relationships, but also about individual growth. And specifically that the individuals around us that give us the best, healthiest relationships are those that encourage us or enhance us and make us want to go and live our best life. So I think that there's some really smart things happening on this story in so many levels. If you simply just want a story with a good twist and turn and surprise along the way, you'll get that. 
But again, rereading it now, I really took my time to appreciate some of the relationship and character development within this one. And I just came to the conclusion that this one is even better than I remember it the first time. It's so brilliant, so smart. And now I cannot wait to go and watch the movie adaptation, which I hope does not disappoint. So I think that's it for this video here. I'd love to know how you felt about the ending of this story. And just remember, if you are gonna leave a comment, please drop some spoiler warnings and some extra spaces so you don't spoil those that are just watching the beginning of this video. But again, if you agree with me, disagree, have a totally different interpretation of the ending, all is fair game. It's a very vague and ambiguous book on purpose. And I don't consider myself to be the be all end all expert. This is my interpretation as best as I understand it. So if you're new to my channel and want to stick around and subscribe, I'd really appreciate that. If you have other books you'd love me to do long form recommendation and reviews for, please let me know in the comments. You can help me out more with this video with that good thumbs up, hitting that little notification bell, and then you'll never miss these bonus videos from me. Thanks so much for watching. Talk to you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.